If you are a fan of Downton Abbey, you know uh, our guest, Alan Leach, is with us right now. And on that show, he plays a key figure, uh, Tom Branson, the mm -hmm. radical chauffeur turned to... How would you describe it? I suppose he is. He's a chauffeur who's turned into the estate manager. He's gone okay. from downstairs to part of the family. All right. <laughs> now, but we'll talk about that in a moment. But you're here for a movie that's opening. It's going to be much talked about. The movie's called The Imitation Game. It tells the story of Alan Turing. Alan Turing was a key figure in cracking Nazi Germany's Enigma Code that helped the Allies win World War II, but he also lived a very tortured life. Leach plays a member of Alan's team. The boys, we're going to get some lunch. Alan? Yes? I said we're going to get some lunch. Alan? Yes? Can you hear me? Yes. I said we're off to get some lunch. <laughs> this is starting to get a little bit repetitive. What is? I had asked if you wanted to come to lunch with us. Uh, um, uh, no, you didn't. You said you were going to get some lunch. Have I offended you in some way? Why would you think that? Would you like to come to lunch with us? What time's lunch time? Alan, it's a bleeding sandwich. What is? Lunch. Oh, I don't like sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> now, this almost is just running the script. It makes you know the comedy. Yeah, there are great moments, moments of humour like in, in this movie. I mean, it's a very tragic story, the story of Alan Turing. He was one of the greatest minds that ever existed. And unfortunately, towards the end of his life, he was prosecuted for being gay. Mm -hmm. And he ultimately took his own life. And this is a real celebration of, of his life and, and a celebration of being different. You know, it's interesting that now, in 2014, he's more famous than he ever was in his lifetime. Yeah, yeah. And, and he's, uh, he's more honoured. No. Yes, well, we owe so much to Alan Turing. He really was one of the forefathers of the digital age. The machines that we use to communicate to our friends and, and the phone calls we take. And this group are, that you're working here, yeah. hey, explain to the audience what you were doing. Yeah, uh, I played John Cairncross, who was part of the team at Bletchley Park to break the Enigma code. It was deemed the unbreakable machine by the Nazis, and they were given the task of breaking the unbreakable code. And Alan Turing, played by Benedict Cumberbatch, realized the only way you're going to break this code is to build a bigger and better machine. And that was what we now know as the first and, digital and computer. He, the Alan Turing character, I mean, in real life, as I understand him, he was different, he was offbeat, he was, uh, his mind operated differently, he could be arrogant, he could be elitist, he could be uncomfortable. Yes. And that's all coming out right there. And that's all in the movie as well. You have Even this... in that scene we just saw. Yeah, exactly. He would only really speak in literal terms. So yeah. if he said, you know, you know, we're going for lunch, he doesn't see that. He just sees that as a statement rather right. than, would you <laughs> right, like to come right. to lunch with us? And, and there's great moments of, uh, of, of kind of humour that we have in that, the fact that people trying to understand him. Did you have to, sorry, uh, did you have to do a lot of research to keep up with this? Because it seems like there was a level of intellect. Um, yeah. The, the terms, the terminology. We had to do a lot of research and thankfully there are a lot of books that have been written about the Enigma Code and mm -hmm. about each character, even uh -huh. a, a biography on John Cairncross. But when it came to trying to understand the actual Enigma machine, you'd need to be a genius. Right. There was a book we were all given that was 450 pages. I think I got to page 24 <laughs> and then had to start again. I mean, but it was you, very but, complex. But you fake it well. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So. It's called acting. <laughs> uh, all right. Downton Abbey, I was saying to you that in America, yeah. uh, it's not that 100 million people watch it, but for a PBS masterpiece, it's a huge audience. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. But it's not only huge, it's crazily devoted. They very feel like loyal they fans. know you, your character, and what your character should do. Yeah, they, they do, and they feel very passionate about it. And I love the response uh, that you get on social media when something happens. The, the series finale just aired in the UK last night. And oh, oh, I went on Twitter last night, and I got quite an interesting response. So there's a lot for the American viewers to get involved with. So do they get angry with you? Sometimes. I, uh, in, in the show, my, my partner, uh, Sybil uh, Crawley, dies. Yes. And then last season, I went and there was, we did a scene in the graveyard and her tombstone was there. And I thought it'd be funny to tweet a picture that said, oh, ran no. into my late wife, she was pretty cold, didn't what even happened? say hello. Wrong move. Uh, yeah. Uh, too soon was mainly the comment that came by. <laughs> um, now, you were only meant to be in three episodes. That's right. I was only hired for three episodes in the first lucky series. Lucky you. Or lucky them. Yeah, no, it's been, oh no, lucky me. It's been an incredible journey to go on. And as you say, I was only hired to be in the first series and, and to be still there how, five how years later. How far can the series go? I don't think much further, mainly because Julian says he'll never do it without Maggie Smith. Uh, and Maggie says, she said herself on set just recently, said, I must be about 196. <laughs> she doesn't even know what age her character is. So I'd say we're probably coming towards the end. I'd love to see another couple of series, but we'll and see Julian it. It's down to Julian. Fellows, yeah. uh, the man the whole time. <laughs> okay, uh, the imitation. <laughs> That's a pretty good.
that's pretty good. Thank you. She's not a big fan of my impression of her. Funny I enough. like yeah, it. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. I'll let her know. Uh, the Imitation Game hits theaters November 28th. 